This video purports to show fighters from the paramilitary rapid support forces at the presidential palace in Khartoum. It's the office of the head of the army, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, but the RSF says it's in control of this government building. There's been more intense fighting in the capital as the two sides battle for control. That's despite the announcement of an extension of a ceasefire for one week after mediation efforts by South Sudan's president, Salva Kiir. Looting is still a problem. In Bakri, in the northern part of Khartoum, thieves have stolen clothes and textiles from every store at this market. The UN says the deteriorating situation is making it difficult to deliver aid. Its humanitarian chief, who visited Port Sudan, says security guarantees are needed. Even when there is no formal national ceasefire, we will still require agreements and arrangements to allow for movement of staff and supplies. We will need to have agreement at the highest level and very publicly, and we will need to deliver those commitments into local arrangements that can be depended on. The fighting and instability is pushing more families to flee the capital. This bus of evacuees is heading north to the eastern Red Sea coast. Along the way, they pass through several checkpoints. Some are controlled by the army, others by the rapid support forces. People coming from Khartoum who are escaping the war and trying to find safety and security arrive here under very difficult circumstances. Some people who have passed through here don't have food. Some are sick. Some are very old. In Port Sudan, Navy ships, commercial ferries and airplanes are shuttling people out of the country. Authorities say around 13,000 foreign nationals have left in recent weeks. But more evacuees arrive each day and the city is struggling to cope. We've had a big problem with accommodation in the area. Syrians are currently living on the street. Some families open their houses to families. But for us, youths, we've been staying in the mosques and we've been getting help with basic needs, food and drink. Despite the poor conditions, the influx into Port Sudan will likely go on until the warring sides agree to a ceasefire that holds. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera's Mohammed Al Tayeb reports from the city of Bahri in northern Khartoum state. This is one of the major markets in the Bahri area of Khartoum for selling clothes and textiles, and it came under a wave of theft and looting. This happened because of the lack of security. As you can see, the shops are robbed of whatever stocks they had. As we speak, we can hear the sound of the anti-aircraft fire by the rapid support forces against the Sudanese army's warplane, which have been hovering over this area. The fighting in Bahri has been mostly distant shelling and artillery throughout the past three days. The army has intensified the airstrikes. As you can see, the fighter jet directly above our heads faced aircraft fire to fend it off. Some shop owners have come to collect whatever is left from their property. Large numbers of these shops have been totally emptied of their stock. This is a result of the recent crisis and the fighting raging within the capital.